It is so creepy and terrifying at the same time as being tiny and cute. I don't know if I like it or not. I'm back and today we have some mini pocket playgrounds from Fingerlings. I don't actually know if that's what they're called, but that's what I'm gonna call them. They look pretty cool. In fact, according to the package, they are the world's coolest. So let's get to the bottom of this and see if they're telling the truth. Before I start today's video, I wanna say a big giant thank you. Thank you all for subscribing to my videos and liking and commenting and sharing. It means the world to me. My goal for 2019 is to hit 100,000 subs. So hopefully with all of your help, we will reach that goal soon. While we're talking about subscribers, I want to send a giant heart right there. A giant heart out to kitten Mimi wherever you are. She won a prize a few months ago and it still has not arrived to her. I have not forgotten you. Hopefully your prize gets to you soon and in the meantime I will dedicate this video to you. So without further ado let's open the world's coolest mini pocket fingerlings. Now if you're new here you won't know this but I absolutely love miniature toys especially Polly Pockets. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos I strongly urge you to watch them because they're pretty awesome but fail. When I saw these in the store I just had to pick them up because I like to see what other companies do in the form of mini things and also what their quality is like. We're gonna open them up, check them out, and see if we can add any polys to them because the more we can do with our mini polys, the happier Jen becomes. With a name like the world's coolest, I clearly had to grab one of each to find out if it was truly cool. So I grabbed a blue rope bridge playground, a yellow merry-go-round playground, and a purple teeter-totter playground. These are all for ages five and up, and they all have a visible monkey shown in the packaging, but they all also contain one hidden monkey, which is really cool. I hope I get this little sloth because it's adorable. On the back of the package, it says there were three to collect. We have one of each, so that's great. We have very simple instructions. Open it, set it up, and have fun. I guess that's all we have to do. We'll start with blue, just because I said so. I've never been a fan of this kind of packaging. Hmm. We've got our little monkey. First, I want to see this. We'll get the one little playset, two monkeys, the keychain, and two flags. And then it just shows you how to assemble it. I think I could figure that out on my own. I'm pretty smart. This is Zoe. She's light blue with purple hair. So since she's so small, I don't expect that there's going to be a great amount of detail. And that is very much evident. But to be fair, they're so tiny. However, I'm really excited that they actually have a hair. Like that is straight up little hair. <laughs> it says fingerlings, friendship at your fingertips. This is actually a really easy open. There's not really much click to it in the sense of pulling it and then lifting it. So if this is going to be hanging upside down on your keychain, I would suggest putting a little Velcro strap to keep it closed because you wouldn't want to lose your little tiny monkeys. So let's open it up. See how easy that was? Here is the inside. Oh, it's not actually in a little bag. It's just in there. Here's our monkey and it is Bella. So she is pink with yellow hair. It is real hair. So they're trying to be like the big ones. And here is the inside of the playset. It's a lot of green plastic to be the grass and this one is the rope bridge playset. So we just pop it up push up the flag and that flag and pop the sides open to provide support so that the actual structure doesn't just go falling down. This is a little slide, a little staircase, some fake hedges. This is the arm that extended to open the playset and keep it from closing on this side as well. We've got a purple ladder kind of like leading up to monkey bars and here is the rope bridge going across. The yellow flags are removable so you can put it somewhere else which makes sense because really you wouldn't have a flag in the way at the top of your ladder. Same with this side. You can move that flag as well. Over here we have a little yellow swing and just some random things to fill up the playground. Oh, it looks like there's a little path there too. Excellent. Now it's time to throw in the monkeys. Well, not throw, but like put them in. My goal is to make like a little monkey zoo sanctuary and then we'll bring Polly to the zoo. I know that they're playgrounds, okay? We're using imagination here. So here is Zoe. Let's hang her right off there and then maybe we'll put Bella into focus. We'll try her out in the little swing and see if she fits. Now, I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be to put them in there, but luckily they did have a little cutout for the monkey's tail, so there we go. I do like that there's the cutout for the tail, but it's actually quite big, so she just kind of flops back. But the swing does move, so that's good. We've got our Zoe up here on the rope bridge. You can hang her by her tail or by her hands. Looks like she's climbing across. It's actually pretty cute. I do wish their head had a little bit of swivel. I understand why they don't, but they're kind of always flopping in one direction just because it's top heavy and they're tipping. They just kind of lean. Let's open up another playset. This one is the merry-go-round playset. And I'm gonna start by taking off the keychain just so it doesn't drag on the table. And here is our yellow little capsule with our playground inside. And this is Mia. So she is a purple monkey and she's got white hair on top. Once again, real, doesn't turn. Very, very tiny, just a little bit bigger than my nail. And let's check out the playset. Oh my goodness, there's the unicorn in this one. I don't even know what my voice just did. Oh my gosh, look how long her hair is. What is going on there? Here is our super tiny unicorn. 
don't quote me, but chances are it is Gigi the unicorn. They've actually put quite a bit of detail into her too. So she's got pink hooves, a light pink muzzle, black eyes with an eyebrow, a yellow horn, and some colored hair. They actually gave her a long tail too. I was starting to think we were only going to get monkeys, so that's kind of cool. Look at the difference in quality between the unicorn and the monkey. We can tell which one is their favorite. Maybe they care a little bit more about that. Time to set up this playset. We have a purple tree with green leaves on top and a pink ladder which will click right down into there and that's also going to act as the support on this side. There's a lot going on. Oh, this part comes out. What? It looks like a gazebo with feet. We've got this big thing with a blue slide coming off of it. Where'd our gazebo with feet go? Okay, here we go. It's obviously not a gazebo with feet. Uh, that doesn't make sense and it was called a merry-go-round so I'm gonna stick that up there because it seems like the most useful spot for it to go. Urgh. We can spin it if we show it. Wee! So there you go. We have a merry-go-round really high up. Hopefully our little pets here aren't afraid of heights. We've got the slide leading down into a fake little pool. I'm assuming that's a pool. It's got little ripples in it. Some ledges to go over to the opposite side. There's a little path, some fake hedges, a ladder to go up into a tree. Wee! Oh, wee! Let's add some critters. There you go. Mia's hanging in a tree. She's just hanging out. And we'll put Gigi right over there. Here we go, let's try her out. Round and round and around she goes, doing more than the Polly does. And then here we have, oop, get on there. This is Mia. Mia's just chilling in her tree over here, but you can always only put her in the one direction. So if her head had the ability to turn, or if we were given monkeys that look in the opposite direction, then we can have them this way. But we can only have her this way if we want her to be basically upside down. That's something that could be fixed. Our playground is slowly coming together. Soon Polly can visit. There we go. Next up, we have the teeter-totter playground. No, I scratched my capsule. And here is Boris. It's a blue fingerling little monkey with orange hair, painted belly, painted feet and hands, and painted face and ears. Once again, looking in that same direction. Keychain off, and time to check it out. Ooh, what's going on here? Did we get the sloth? <gasps> I think we got the little purple sloth. Oh my gosh, look at that little teeny tail. Oh, it is so creepy and terrifying at the same time as being tiny and cute. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> So the face looks really, really creepy. I'm not going to lie. Look how tiny this is. Oh, I can't. I just, it's too small. It looks like a human nose. So weird. I'm not sure I'm excited about this one anymore. I believe this is supposed to be Marge the Sloth uh, because of the purple and the pink hair, but I could be wrong. Yeah, let me know if it's not Marge, okay? And now I will figure out how to assemble this playset. So Marge is losing some hair inside of it. I think it's actually already ready. So it looks like there's four seats here. They've got little cutouts for the tails. So I guess four of the little fingerlings can use it at the same time. And this is just like a double swing. A double swing and a climber. Looks like bubble blowers up there. This one appears to be the most plain out of the three. So it's got a four seated teeter-totter in yellow with some steps and such to climb on over here, all in green. A double swing in pink with some climbing apparatuses up here that look like bubble wands. And I guess you could use these areas. Like there's no reason why you couldn't. Not sure if it's supposed to be like a little pool or a little sandbox or just a little grassy area. But yes, let's add our little monkey and our sloth, which could be Marge. I'm gonna hang that one upside down. Always. Look, now you can't see him because he's weighted to one side. Boris, come on now. There we go. Hook him through both. And I'm gonna put Marge over here. Maybe she'll fit. Okay, the spots are too big. They needed to be a little squishy, like a little, I don't know, a little grippy in there, a little padded. Marge is too small to fit in there, so we'll just put her up here. Let's try actually adding a few of the other monkeys. I do want to try out this teeter-totter since it could fit four. I'm interested because their tails are quite long if they just keep hitting the ground. So they fit the monkeys really well, but because these monkeys' heads turn the opposite way, you won't get to see their excitement. You know why that needs to be an option? Come on, Boris, join us. One of us, one of us. There we go, teeter-totter, teeter daughter. <laughs> Alright, so there's clearly no spots for Polly's to stand, but that makes sense because this is not what they're meant for. I just like to see what else we can use our Polly dolls in to continue having fun and imaginative play. But actually, I wonder if they can go in the swings but backwards through the monkey holes. Look, she actually does. She totally fits. Whee! This is obviously not their intended purpose, but look, my Polly doll actually fits in the swing. Give her a push. Whee! And what's that? She spots over there? She's got her binoculars, you know. 
She sees some monkeys and a unicorn. What? Unicorns don't belong at a monkey playground sanctuary. Let's go check them out. There, now she can look at them close up and check out their little creature features. It's too bad that they're not compatible because that would be really, really cool to have them go around and around. Don't get too close. Never approach a wild animal, even if they are pink and cute with rainbow hair. We've checked everything out and now it's time to find out. Is this amazing? I don't know, that's your choice. Overall, this is actually pretty decent for me. Is it gonna win Toy of the Year? Probably not. But does it do what its intended purpose is? Yes. It gives us a small, compact, on-the-go little playset that we could take with us. It's more than one character and it provides a little bit of fun when you might be bored. So for that, I say it's a win. There are, of course, some flaws or details that I would fix and that would be add some details so that it's not just all green grass. Maybe add some painted flowers or cobblestones. I would change the monkey's heads to be able to turn or to have the ability to get a monkey that's facing the opposite direction. I would prefer also a better clasp for when it's closed because these hang upside down and they open very easily, which means if you bump something or drop your bag or whatever it's attached to, you might actually lose all of your pieces. So just be mindful of that. Maybe add a little strap if you can. Now, I'm aware that I'm saying these are pretty basic plain things inside and that I critiqued the new Polly Pockets for being a problem for that exact reason, but these are new. This is something they've never done before and Polly had a reputation to protect and even this gave us more space to play, more characters and more items inside that had movable functionality than the new Polly's. And this actually cost less too. So how did a random brand give us a better compact toy than even Polly Pocket? See what I'm saying here? Do you know somebody who loves miniature toys or small keychains with little worlds inside them? If you do, please make sure you share this video with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down in the comment section below, do you have one of these? And if you do, have have you lost anything when it was dangling upside down on your keychain? Am I just making that up or is that a real thing that I should be concerned about? Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!